welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to make these super cute, beginner-friendly, creamy hats that are perfect for the charity of your choice. For these little hats, I am using a yarn by Red Heart called Baby Hugs. And the reason I chose Baby Hugs is because it is Ecotech certified. Now, what does that mean? The Ecotech certification is right there on the yarn label of the Baby Hugs yarn. And what that means is this yarn has been tested and proven to be free of many different harmful substances, which means it's great to use for hats for little babies that are premature, don't you think? That's why I decided to use this really great Baby Hugs yarn. The other reason I chose it is because it comes in two different weights of yarn. It comes in a lightweight yarn, which you could think of as like a sport, or a medium weight yarn, which is like a worsted. Depending on the type of fabric you're going for, you could choose either one to make this pattern. I've written the pattern specifically for each size of yarn. So if you're gonna use the light yarn, be sure you're following the light yarn uh, pattern. If you're gonna use worsted weight or the medium yarn, make sure you're following the worsted weight pattern. All the difference is, is that the numbers are different. That's it, nothing else changes. Besides the yarn, you're also gonna need some knitting needles, a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle, which is all linked in the pattern, which is free over on marleybird.com. If you go to marleybird.com, no, you know what, let's do this. Right down there in the video description box below, I'll put a direct link to the pattern. And while you're down there, please smash that like button so other people know that you enjoyed this video. Go ahead, get your pattern, gather your materials. Here at the start, if you're a beginner and you just wanna practice a little bit before you jump in with the yarn you're gonna make the actual preemie hats with, just grab some yarn you have laying around just to get the feel of how to do these stitches. I'm really excited to show you how to make this really wonderful, beginner-friendly and easy preemie hat. So let's jump in. Knitters and crocheters are some of the most charitable crafters in the entire world. So I am thrilled to be able to show you how to make this really great preemie hat. Let's go ahead and jump in. As I mentioned, I wrote the pattern for two different weights of yarn. So make sure you're following the right one. The different yarn you use will determine the number of stitches you have to cast on. For this hat pattern, you could use any cast on you choose to use. I prefer to do the long tail cast on because I think it has a really great stretch while being stable and it's a wonderful transition when you go into the garter stitch. For the long tail cast on, we need to make sure we have a long enough tail for the cast on. So what I want you to do is I want you to measure out three times the total circumference of the hat you're going to make. Once you've measured out three times the total circumference of the hat, give yourself a little bit of extra wiggle room. It's at this point that I wish for you to place a slip knot. What you'll do for a slip knot is take the tail of your yarn, put it in the palm of your hand. Take your working yarn, wrap around your forefinger and middle finger, and when you come back up, cross over. Rotate your hand over, and what we will do is go underneath this front loop and grab the back loop and pull it off. You now have this nice loop right here that can be tightened by separating the tail and the working yarn. And we're gonna place that loop directly onto your needle. Just a quick reminder, the size needle you're using is determined by the size yarn you're using also. So make sure if you're using a worsted weight yarn, you have a US size nine needle. If you're using a lightweight yarn, you have a US size seven needle. Once you have the slip knot placed on your needle, let's go ahead and do the long tail cast on. I'm gonna show you an alternative way of doing the long tail cast on. What I want you to do is the tail is over here to the left and my working yarn is over here to the right. I'm gonna make sure that I use my forefinger here to hold on to that slip knot so it doesn't go anywhere. I'm gonna take my left hand and I will grab my tail. See, I just, I literally just grab my tail. I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm going to scoop around, okay? Once you scoop, take the tip of your needle and go up your thumb, just like that, okay? Now what I want you to do is I want you to take your working yarn and I want you to wrap it around your needle, just like so. And what we're gonna do is we're now gonna take our needle and come out the stitch we just went into that's on our thumb, but we're also going to bring that wrap around. So you'll see here, if I take my needle, I just come out the stitch that was on my thumb, sort of like it was a window, and then that stitch is now on my needle. I take my thumb out and give it a gentle pull. 
okay? So now I have two stitches because our slip knot does count as a stitch. We do that again. I grab my tail, I scoop, hang on to those stitches. I go up the thumb, around my needle. I'm gonna call this out the window. It's out the thumb and then let your thumb fall off and give it a pull. Make sense? So I have three stitches. I'm gonna scoop my thumb around, go up my thumb, around my needle, come out my thumb, right, out the window, and off my thumb. All right, so that's an alternative way of doing the long tail cast on. If you wanna learn the more traditional way of doing a long tail cast on, don't be afraid to go ahead and click that little I button right there, and it'll take you to a specific video for how I do the long tail cast on. In the meantime, go ahead and cast on the number of stitches that you need to cast on for the size hat you're making. Once you finish your cast on, you'll notice that all your stitches are resting nicely on your needle and you have this nice ridge right down here at the bottom. Good job, that's exactly what you're supposed to do. The next part of the hat is to actually get into the knitting and that's what we'll do for the entire hat. Once your stitches are all on this one needle, we wanna put this needle in our left hand. So place the needle in your left hand. You're no longer going to use this tail, so just ignore it. You can maneuver these stitches a little bit closer to the tip of the needle just so that you can control them, but don't let them fall off until I tell you to. Grab your other needle and place it in your right hand. What I want you to do is working into this very first stitch right here, you want to go in from left to right and we're going directly into that stitch. I'm gonna do that one more time. This is the stitch. I'm gonna take my spare needle, I'm coming to the left of the stitch, and I'm going just right through it. Once it's through there, I can take my left hand and hold on to both of the needles, so that way they aren't going anywhere. I'll grab my working yarn, and I'm going to wrap it around my needle just like I did with my cast on. Now this wrap around is gonna come through that stitch and onto this new needle, just like we did with our cast on. So, in, uh, imagine that this needle was my thumb, okay? So now I'm gonna do is take this needle, my right hand needle, and pull it through that stitch just like when it was on my thumb. So I take my needle and I just pop it through that stitch, through that window, right? Now that stitch is on my right hand needle. And just like when we let that one fall off our thumb, we're now going to let that one fall off our needle. And we have a stitch. You go to the next stitch, going from left to right, Go in, wrap around your right hand needle, and then come out and off. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. If this is the first time you've ever done a knit stitch, don't worry, it might feel a little awkward to begin with, but I'm sure you're doing it correctly. Just follow these steps with me. Going to the next stitch, we go in from the left towards the right, around, come out that stitch, and we're gonna let this one fall off our left hand needle. In, around, out, off. I want to caution you right now, do not take your needles and separate them apart like that, trying to tighten up these stitches. You don't want to do that. That does not lead to a very nice bottom portion here. You want to keep your stitches or your needles nice and relaxed so the stitches are comfortable between each other. Go ahead and finish knitting down the entire row. When you get to the very end, all of your stitches will now be on your right hand needle and your left hand needle will be empty. When you get to the last stitch, go ahead and go in it just like you normally would and knit it and then let that pop off. You now have an empty needle and then all of your stitches are over here on this needle. It's okay if they look like they're kind of crumpled up like this. What you wanna do is straighten them out. So go ahead and take a minute and just make sure you're straightening them all out right now so that you have this nice 
ridge just like we had before it's on the bottom of the needle because as your work grows it'll grow from the bottom of the needle we do not want it up here at the top you always want it down here towards the bottom you can see it already looks like it got a little bit bigger right from the cast on which is perfectly fine that's absolutely normal you never want to assume that your cast on stitches are the size of what you're getting ready to uh, make because it takes a couple rows of knitting or working into your pattern stitch to uh, really show how the stitches are going to expand out and give you the size you need. Once you have the stitches completed over here, take that needle, place it in your left hand, and we will repeat that entire process. Now, I'm gonna give you a tip right here that's really common that beginners will do. You can see right here at the very start, this stitch looks like it's a little bit loose, right? So we have a tendency to take our yarn and pull it up and try and tighten that stitch, which it absolutely looks like it tightens it, right? But if you notice, I've also made it look like it's two stitches. You do not want to tighten your stitch in that manner because when you do, all you're doing is taking this purl bump right there and you're extending it up, making it look like it's two stitches. And we don't want to do that. So before you work into each row, you wanna make sure you see that purl bump and make sure you're going into the stitch that's above that purl bump, okay? This edge here will tighten up naturally, and if it doesn't, that's okay, because it'll be hidden in the seam. So let's go ahead and jump into knitting this row you will see that it's the exact same motion, exact same process as you did in the previous row. And that's what it will be like for the entire pattern, with the exception of when we get to the crown or the top of the hat. Let's go ahead and knit all the way down this row. When you get to the end of this row, you will go ahead and change your needles again, just like we just did, and continue knitting. You will knit in this method until your hat reaches the specified measurement as listed on the pattern for the size you're making. Make sure you're following along with the hat size you're making. You don't wanna accidentally make it too big or too small. Once you've reached the hat pattern, or once you've reached the measurement for your hat that it's supposed to be, join me back here and we'll move on to the crown. Go ahead and hit pause on the video. I'll wait for you. Hey, welcome back. By now, you should have knitted until the body of your hat measures the number that is indicated on the pattern for the size you are making. Now it is time for us to do the shaping for the top of the hat. That is actually called the crown of the hat, this portion right here. We'll do that by working what's called knit two togethers, and here's what we'll do. Instead of knitting just into this one stitch like we've been doing all along, we are going to knit into both of these stitches at the same time. You do that by working it like this. You go in from left to right, into the second stitch, and then directly into the first stitch. So you're in through both stitches. Take your yarn, wrap it around your needle, and just like before, you'll bring that wrap, but this time you're going through both of those stitches instead of just one. Once that stitch is through, go ahead and let those jump off the needle. You've just taken two stitches and created one. So that is a decrease. We will do a knit two together all the way down this row. There's two stitches. From the second one, go from left to right through the first one also. Yarn over, and then pop out and off. Let's do this again. Second one through the first one. Yarn over, come out and off. Second one through the first one. Yarn over pop out and off. Go ahead and continue doing this all the way down the row. Once you get to the last stitch, go ahead and knit those two together and you will have half the number of stitches on your needle as you had before, which is great. Once you've done this knit two together row, the next row is just a plain knit row. Once you finish the knit row, we will once again do a decrease row. For the plain knit row, it's just like what you did for the body of the hat. You will go into each stitch and knit.
After the knit row, we'll do another decrease row. And because we have an even number of stitches, we can do the knit two togethers all the way down this row once again. So you will do the knit two together all the way to the end. And that will give you half the number of stitches as you have on your needles right now. Once you're done with that decrease row, we'll knit one more row. Some of the hat sizes require another row of decrease and a knit row. And it depends on whether you're gonna do just knit two togethers down the row, or if you have to do a knit one and then knit two togethers down the row. If you have an odd number of stitches, that's why we have to do that knit one and then knit two together all the way down the row. Take a look at your pattern and see if the size you're making requires another couple rows. If it doesn't, you're good to go and you're ready to jump to the finishing. If it does, go ahead and complete those extra rows and then jump to the finishing. Go ahead and hit pause, I'll be here waiting. At this point, your wee little hat is starting to look like it has a little bit of a cone top and it's starting to take shape. So let's go ahead and bring it all together. The first thing I wanna do is cut our working yarn and I wanna make sure that I have a length of yarn that is good enough to not only seam the sides closed, but close up this top. So I like to make sure I have at least three times the length plus a little bit extra. I will cut my yarn at that point and I am done with my working yarn. Now I'll take one of my bent tip tapestry needles and I highly recommend getting the steel bent tip tapestry needles because they make weaving in your ends so much easier. Once you take your needle, you'll thread your tail onto this needle. Simply put it around, put your tail, here let's see here, put your tail around the eye of the needle, pinch it, pull the needle out, and then just shimmy that right onto there. You've now threaded the tail onto the tapestry needle, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off these stitches, and this is how we're gonna do it. Are you ready? I want you to take your tapestry needle, and I want you to start off by going into this first stitch as if to knit, and putting your needle through it, and then pull that yarn through that stitch. Now that that yarn is through that stitch, go ahead and let the stitch fall off the needle. We'll do the same with the next stitch. Go in as if to knit, so going from left to right, and then pull the yarn through. Let the yarn fall off. Left to right, pull the yarn through, and let it fall off. Make sure you are going through the stitch that's on the needle and not one of the uh, stitches underneath it by accident. When you get to the end here, all of your stitches will be off of your knitting needle and the rest of this project is all done with our little tapestry needle here. So I'm done with my needle, I can set it aside, and I have my little work, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my yarn here and I'm gonna pull it like a drawstring. See when I pull that like a drawstring, it really cinches those stitches nice and tight. Now that I've pulled all of those nice and tight, I'm gonna thread my needle through the stitches and secure the top of the hat. One way I like to do this, because I like this top of the hat to make sure it doesn't come undone, is I'm gonna start over here where I first went into the stitches and I'm just threading my needle through all of those stitches and I'm gonna give it a good pull, okay? Now, with my work a little bit closed here, can you see how I'm closed? I'm gonna do this one more time and I am just gonna make sure that I'm through all the stitches and at the same time, make sure that it's nice and tight. Okay, so I pulled that nice and tight. Now, I wanna make sure I go to the inside of my hat here. Okay, inside of my hat. Those are all nice and tight, but if I just keep going in circles, it's gonna eventually come unwound. So what I wanna do is take my yarn and I'm just gonna pop over to the side there through a stitch, and then I'm gonna pop up over here through a stitch like a figure eight. Let's see here if I can get this to work. So I just went through all of them like a figure eight and that really closed it and I did it on the inside. 
so that way on the outside it still looks like that really pretty puckered little circle. Now, I want to make sure my yarn is over here to this edge because I want my yarn here to work through these stitches to seam it closed with an invisible closure for garter stitch. So I'm going to have my yarn over here, just poking it back through so that way it's over here ready for me to work. I'm going to turn my work back right side out. So this is the right side of my hat. I will close the hat and what I want to do here is I want to match up these really nice ridges. Can you see those nice ridges? And what we're going to do is we're going to seam the hat closed through each ridge that course from one side that corresponds to the other side. Okay? So right here at the start, we have a ridge right here. So I'm going to go through that pearl bump of that ridge. And then come over here to the corresponding pearl bump of this ridge and pull. Now I want to make sure these two lines are lined up. You see that pearl bump right there? So I'm going to put my needle through that one and give it a pull. And then put my needle through the corresponding one on the other side and give it a pull. Here's my next ridge. It's right down here. So I'm going to put my needle through, let's see, I want to put it through that bump and give it a pull. Corresponding edge is right there. Put it through that pearl bump and give it a pull. And I'll do this all the way down, making sure that I'm lining up each pearl bump row. As you get to the bottom of the hat here, you'll get to the, the edge here that we want to make sure is nice and closed. Give a nice pull of your tail. Make sure it's not puckering anything. And you can see right there, it's a nice invisible join. Look how pretty that is. But now we want to make sure that this edge down here comes together. So make sure that you go into one pearl bump on this edge and then the final pearl bump on this edge. Give it a nice pull together. Now I've brought my tail and my needle to the inside of the work and it's time to weave in my ends. And I want to make sure that I really weave in my ends nice and neatly so that way they don't come undone as the baby's wearing the hat. You want to do all your weaving in of your tails on the inside of your hat. And you will have two tails to weave in here. We have the one we started off with and the one that's already on our needle still that we used to seam. And all I'm going to do is I am going to mimic the knit stitches that are on here. So I'm going to take my tail, I'm going to work Let's see, work up this stitch, come down this stitch, you see where that is, and then pop it through this portion down here. I'm just following along the actual knit stitches. If you do this nice and neat, it will weave in your ends really nicely and you won't have any issues. You can see there, you can't see where there's a tail woven in. It's a little bit thicker than the rest, but not too much. And then when I get to the end there, I will go ahead and I will go up and I will actually split the yarn itself, working my way back up. And then I will split the yarn one more time, coming back down. And then one more time, going back up, just to make absolute certainty that it's not going to come undone. You can see there I'm giving it a good tug to make sure nothing's pulled too tight or too loose. I feel like that's nice and secure so I can snip my, my yarn clear up there to the start. And all I do now is do the same thing to this tail. So I'm going to shorten this tail a little bit because I don't need all of that yarn to weave in. And I'll go ahead and weave this one in as well. I've woven that in, give it a good snip, and as you can see, my little tiny preemie hat is good to go. And it's in the beautiful red color, which is great for all of those preemies that are born in February to raise awareness of um, heart awareness in February. I read an article on it recently. So this little red hat would be perfect for any charity you want to give to, but especially in February because they like to have red hats in February. Now, just so that you know, you can absolutely make variations of this hat in the sense that maybe you wanted to do stripes. You could change colors every two rows and work some stripes.
Um, you could also add a pom-pom to the top of the hat if you want, but I will caution you, there are some charities that do not want any sort of embellishment on the hat. They want something just this simple to be given to them because that's all they want. And uh, could you imagine having a little tiny baby's head that would fit this little tiny hat? I mean, that's that's crazy to me that there are babies that small out there that need these little hats and uh, little mamas and daddies that are taking care of those babies and would appreciate your love. So hopefully this has taught you how to make a very simple knit flat <laughs> beginner preemie hat for charity and you'll run out and grab yourself some Baby Hugs yarn, whether it's the Baby Hugs Light or the Baby Hugs Merino. I'll put a link to both of these in the video description box right down there below. You can order directly from redheart.com, which is really wonderful because they have a lot of discounts all the time for free shipping or a discounted off of uh, a yarn or whatever it may be. So always check out redheart.com whenever you're in need of Baby Hugs yarn. Hope you enjoyed this video and you will see smash that like button and hit subscribe so you're up to date whenever I have a new video released right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Hey, don't leave yet. I'm sure there are other videos here that you will enjoy. Go ahead and check out some of my knitting and crochet videos as well as some of my crafting videos. You will love them, I promise. If you hit subscribe, you'll be up to date whenever there's a new video released. And as my kids say, don't forget to smash that like button. Bye. Everything you need to know about knitting or crochet can be found right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Learn with Marley Bird. Visit youtube.com forward slash Marley Bird.